All right. Well, we got a couple of stragglers that I'll come back through, but I want to make sure I got done in time so you guys can get some lunch and then get to the rest of your day. Okay. Um, you're talking about the 70 volt there. Mm -hmm. As opposed to just running the voltage wire to two channels. Is that all in the receiver that's doing that? Or is it, how are, how is it where is it starting? The amplifier starts with a 70 volt output. Okay. Yeah, there's a, like my amplifier up here on the back. It's got a common, and then it's got an 8 ohm option if you want to run an 8 ohm. It's got a 70 volt option, it's got a 100 volt option. So you start it at the amplifier, and then it connects to the transformer on the speakers. So you got to have both. You can't do a regular, you know, AV receiver and connect a 70 volt speaker to it. It's not gonna, it's not gonna like any of that. The speaker won't like it, and the amp won't like it. So the so most of your jobs, I assume, you're coming off of an AV receiver that's inside, right? Oh, so you're actually putting a receiver outside. We're doing the whole thing. So then you, you, what sort of sources are most people, are you trying to do AM, FM radio, the whole thing? Or most people just want a Bluetooth receiver? It's all Wi-Fi. So you could hook a, whatever that Wi-Fi receiver is. It's got an analog output on it. You can run that into a, a, power, a power amplifier, 70 volt power amplifier. So it's just a single input. And then you just connect your 70 volt speakers to it and it would do everything that you want it to do. So, so surround sound and speakers surrounding a pool are two entirely different things, right? So surround sound is your 5.1, your 7.1, where you're using DTS or Atmos or something like that to get surround sound. So your front's giving you most of the music and your rears are giving you more fill. I imagine what you guys are talking about is you just have speakers around the pool, right? So 70 volt would be easier because A, the amplifier will be cheaper. So imagine if you dug a trench around that pool, just a single trench, right? You put your in-ground speakers around it, and then you just ran one strip of wire, connected it, connected it, connected it, connected it, cover the trench back up, wire that into your amplifier, you're done, right? Instead of trying to, I need to go here, and then I need to make another one to go there, and then I need to make another one to go around the corner, and now I've got to come back this way, where you have now this big nest of wires that are coming up into that kitchen cabinet that you've made, um, 70 volt would be a much easier choice. Just on labor alone. Yeah, it would be way less wire to do it at 70 volt. And especially if you're just using that one Wi-Fi receiver, I mean, that'll plug into any amplifier. You don't have to have, because right now you're probably using an AV receiver to plug into that, right? So you're getting a lot of functionality that no one's ever even using, like HDMI switching and all kinds of stuff like that that nobody needs. Yeah, the uh, 70 volt amp would be a, a, a much better choice. Um, all right, good question. Uh, I see a cooler has arrived in the back, so if you need any more Mountain Dew, because I'm boring you, please get one. Um, this next section, sound masking, uh, this one's important to me and I think it's going to be important to you. Is anybody here familiar with sound masking? Is anybody here not familiar with sound masking? Okay, good, good. So sound masking. Sound masking is raising the ambient level of noise at a listener to make someone who's talking somewhere else less discernible. You are trying to mask the sound so that you can't understand what that person is saying. Okay? Now, this is very important in our world, and I will tell you why. So we're trying to mask a sound. There's no such thing as a cone of silence. There's no such thing as being able to eliminate sound. There, that does not exist. Um, so you have to mask it. You know, if you've ever been on an airplane, and you hear that, you know, there's always that whoosh happening. You know, you notice you can't really hear people that are talking two or three rows in front of you, two or three rows behind you. That is sound masking at work. You know, if you open, if you open the window in your car and you're driving and people in the back seat are talking and you can't hear them, that's sound masking at work. Um, there's a lot of places that you go that sound masking occurs naturally like that with the car. Um, 
but it's it's something that is important because privacy is very important in the United, in the United States today. And so uh, offering this to your customers is very important, which we'll get to uh, in a little bit. So this right here, this is not sensible, okay? If you ever walk into a building and someone's doing this, just leave, okay? Because there's bad things that are happening. This guy is up to no good, and you want no part of this. This is not a sound masking system, although he probably can't hear anything, so it's good for him. It doesn't make sense uh, for a group. So sound masking uses shape noise, sorry. So shape noise, and it's random. When I say random, it is a mix of all frequencies, either white noise or pink noise. For those of us that are old enough, and everyone in here except maybe him and him, uh, probably remember when TV used to go off the air. Uh, you know, the Poltergeist movie? Okay, that's white noise. TV doesn't go off the air anymore, so I've met people that have no idea what that is. Always makes me feel old. Um, but that, that is white noise. You will notice in my little drawing here, these speakers are also above the ceiling. You do not want sound masking to be noticeable. Okay, those, that's the one really, two, two rules of sound masking, which we'll get to, and I'm gonna jump, jump the gun here. Is that the speaker always goes at the listener, not the talker, and that the speaker should not be visible. You want them to just be a part of the environment that people don't see or notice. You will see there are sound masking systems in the world that are direct field, right? So they're in the ceiling and pointing down. And there's a lot of marketing that goes into that to try and make it the greatest thing ever. But if you're walking through a room and it's and then it's not, and then it's and then it's not, it's gonna drive somebody insane. Most likely the people working there, they're gonna go postal, too many guns in the world, whatever. It's not gonna end well, right? So we wanna try and keep people as Sane as possible. So most open office employees, like in the other room here on the other side of this wall, I think there's eight desks and they're all just kind of sitting together. And um, if someone's on the phone, they're probably all hearing it, right? So that's annoying for two reasons. One, you may be trying to get your own work done and whatever they're talking about is taking your concentration away or they're talking about something that you don't even want to know about. You know, a lot of people will talk about talk to their wife on the phone or their girlfriend or whoever and it's an argument ensues and you're listening to it at work or something, nobody wants that. Um, so people get uh, unhappy, they can't get their work done, productivity goes down, all of these things are bad for bosses, right? So having a sound masking system improves uh, the ability of workers to do their work. So that's one reason why owners of buildings should always want sound masking. A little background. Sound masking's been around for 40 years. Okay, so this is not a new technology. You may hear people say, I need a white noise system, or I need a pink noise system, or I need a masking system. It goes by many different names. Um, but it is all the same thing. It is all speech privacy and sound masking. Okay, white noise, which I'll demonstrate for you guys uh, a little later, uh, is all frequencies all at once. So it's just uh, massive frequencies. And uh, it's great if you're using like this ceiling, well actually this is concrete, this wouldn't really work. But if you have a sheetrock ceiling um, or something that's really thick, uh, white noise is the preferred sound to use in sound masking because it will get through that material much better than pink noise because it's got a lot of the lower end frequencies uh, and the really high ones that you normally can't hear. Uh, and then pink noise uh, is a little bit of a, a smaller range of frequencies. If you got a drop tile, like mineral board ceiling, that's what you would use or uh, say you're putting it under a, a raised floor or something like that. Um, all right, so this is by far the, the cheapest way to add speech privacy to a building. There's a number of other ways to do it. You can build a bunch of walls. You can really pack them full of insulation between offices. Um, you can put solid doors on offices instead of you know the hollow doors that we all use now with the big gap at the bottom. Um, you could put up uh, sound deadening material on your walls or in between offices. Uh, but all that stuff's really expensive. Uh, it all has to be maintained. Um, it all has to be installed. So the cost of doing some of those things is very high compared to adding a sound masking generator and a couple of speakers, which you, know, you guys could probably buy a sound masking, total sound masking system for a small office or small restaurant or something here. Your cost is probably less than 300 or 400 bucks. I mean, it's, you know, it's cheap. And if for the customer, you know, if that becomes five or six or 800, that's much cheaper than changing out a bunch of doors and adding a bunch of other stuff. Um, so it treats the entire space or at least where that listener is. Just remember the speaker always goes at the listener. 
Um, and then you can also add background music and paging on top of that if you wanted to. Uh, some people will say, well, my background music is my sound masking system. Um, and to a certain extent, that is true while if the music is very dynamic. Um, however, when there's commercials or when there's lulls in the music or between songs when there's nothing playing, well, now you're hearing everything around you. Um, and depending on what music you're listening to, everyone has a variety of tastes in music that may bother you know, somebody more than the noise did when, before the sound masking. So um, you can add background music to a, a sound masking system. Uh, we actually do that uh, in our building in Phoenix. Um, you can buy equipment that will ramp up that sound. So you know, I usually am in the office by about six. It's pretty slow. Not a lot of people in there. A lot of phones aren't ringing. And for the first year I worked there, I always thought the water was running. I kept calling the maintenance department. Bob, there's water running somewhere. I don't know, I don't know what's happening. Okay, I'll look into it. And I just don't think he ever told me because he liked me worrying about it. So then he finally, someone else was finally in. He's like, no, that's the sound masking. And I'm like, oh. Because after the first hour or two of the day, I can't even hear it anymore because now people are walking around and there's phones ringing and people are talking and it's doing exactly what it needs to do. I don't hear the, the whoosh noise anymore. Uh, I can just sort of, I'm aware of people talking or aware of people on the phone, but I'm not directly involved in what they're saying because I can't hear it. Okay, so what are the disadvantages? Not tuning the system, not setting the expectation. Um, people that can't hear already, um, if you just make it louder, because remember, we're going to make it louder. So I'm asking makes it louder. So if you already can't hear, and I put you in a room where I'm going to make it louder, it's just going to be harder for you to hear. So um, got to be cognizant of that. And then people with a visual handicap. So if I'm blind and I rely on my, my hearing, you know, for a, you know, oh, there's a fire over here, or I need your help, or get down, or whatever that is. Well, now I've made it louder, and I'm going to have a harder time hearing again. You know what I mean? So, um, being aware of those things, asking those questions when you're talking to a customer up front, uh, will go a long way toward uh, getting them the system that they want, and helping them to understand what the system's actually going to do. A lot of customers believe this is the cone of silence. The cone of silence does not exist. Okay, you cannot eliminate sound. I think we are all aware of that. Customers are not. They see too much stuff on TV that they think is real. We're a world that does not happen. Um, so making sure they understand what the system is going to do. Because when, when they say sound masking, you tell them, yes, I can make it louder in here. They're going to look at you like you're insane. But uh, that is what we are going to be doing, is making it louder. All right, so where can it be used? Sound masking can be used everywhere. And I really need to update this slide because it should be used everywhere and I'll tell you why. Every single building that is a commercial building in this country, there is a boss's office. Okay? It doesn't matter if, if it's a, you know, a small mom and pop operation or if it's you know, the Enron building, whatever. Someone's always, there's always a boss's office wherever that is. And People have conversations in that office, whether it's about pay, whether it's about health issues, whether it's about personal issues, that the rest of the building doesn't need to know about, right? Um, this is really especially important in places that hire a lot of teenagers and young 20-year-olds, because uh, they are gossips, and they always want to be in everyone's business, uh, and that may not be what you want, because if I'm... You know, if I'm having family problems or health problems and I tell my boss that and then, you know, later on in the day, someone's like, oh, I heard you have cancer, Joe. And I'm like, I told that in confidence. Well, now I'm, I blame the boss, right? Because he must have told somebody, even though he didn't. This person may have just been walking by the office and overheard the conversation. Um, so sound masking keeps conversations that are supposed to be private, private. Um, and any place that has a boss's office can use sound masking. And these systems don't have to be huge. I got a couple of examples that I'll show you here in a while. Um, but very important. Uh, otherwise, offices, you know, like we talked about this building, perfect candidate, although the concrete floors present challenge. Um, doctor's offices, dentists, chiropractors. You know, in Arizona, we are the kings of strip malls. They're everywhere. They build these medical facilities. You know, someday all you guys are going to move to Arizona when you retire, because that's what people from the Midwest do. So we have to have a lot of facilities for uh, doctors, dentists, all that kind of thing. 
Um, and I, you know, I go to a chiropractor uh, relatively regularly, but uh, they have a waiting room and you go in there and if you're sitting in the chair, you're probably no more than eight feet from there. And if someone's given them their social security number or their home address and all this kind of stuff, I mean, identity theft is a problem in this country. It, I mean, it really is a legitimate problem in this country. So uh, giving somebody the ability, when you go to a place like that and they say, yeah, I want to do background music for my patients. I need it in the waiting room and I need it in the, you know, the, the therapy room or whatever it is. Well, what about your sound masking? Uh, what is that? Why do I need that? Well, you know, you've got this waiting room. People are giving out their personal information. You don't want that to be overheard. You know, we can add uh, two speakers out there. It'll add this nice whooshing sound. That way, that, those conversations be unintelligible. You won't get sued for having someone's identity get stolen. Uh, all that kind of thing. You know, HIPAA, the Health Insurance Portability and Protection Act. Um, that is a law, you know. I mean, there's... HR departments go through all kinds of steps to protect this stuff, but if you don't have, you know, if you've got a window or a hollow door that people are standing outside of, no matter what you do with the files and all that, someone can still get that information. Uh, pharmacies, if anyone's ever picked up a prescription at like a Walgreens, you know, you're, just, you're standing right behind the person in line. I mean, you can be stealing identities all day, uh, relatively easily. Banks, the same way, you know, you all go through the queue and then you go up and talk to the person. Um, so there's a lot of applications for this, and this is a really, really easy add-on sale for you guys because of the importance that is attached to it, right? Nobody wants to get sued. I hate to say, I hate to say it like that, but nobody wants to get sued. You know, in hospital applications, this is really important because uh, the Affordable Care Act, hospitals now get judged on their quality of stay, and if their patients give them bad reviews on their quality of stay, they don't get money from the government um, to subsidize some of that. So if I'm a patient, uh, and out in the hallway, I always hear people running or screaming or who knows what. Well, when I get out of there, I couldn't sleep a wing because this place was, you know, crazy loud. Uh, adding sound masking in the patient uh, rooms would, would keep a lot of that noise out that I wouldn't really be able to understand. Uh, some people use sound masking at home. You know, maybe you have a bathroom fan that you turn on to help you sleep, you know. It's the same kind of thing. Um, radius of distraction. Okay, so the radius of distraction is the area that someone can be in and that their hearing will pick up enough intelligibility that they can be distracted by it. So the average one for this is 45 feet. So without sound masking, you could hear up to 45 feet. So I'm probably bothering the people next door even though this wall's here, but that's okay. I don't care. Um, so in some smaller businesses, this may not be, you know, 45 feet may be all you have. You know what I mean? That might be the whole building. So you're hearing everything everywhere. Uh, by adding sound masking, you can reduce that uh, down to 15 feet. So it's quite a bit of reduction. Uh, you could add more sound masking speakers and probably target that you know, down to about 10 feet if you really wanted to try. Uh, but then you'd probably have a lot of speakers and you'd have a lot of white noise. Uh, we talked about uh, reducing sound uh, relatively cost effectively. Um, new building construction costs, if you're talking about a new, a new build and someone wants to put some speech privacy in and now they're putting in those solid doors, they're going to put in extra walls or sound deadening material, you know, if you have the conversation with them up front that you can do a sound masking system with them, they can cut a lot of that stuff out, save them money. So if now you're saving a builder money, uh, they're more interested in what you're talking about, what you're selling, and more likely to use you later. Um, and then, you know, for cubicle farms, you know, you've probably seen cubicle offices where they're anywhere from, you know, three and a half to six feet, depending on where you're at. Uh, the bigger they are, the more expensive they are. So with sound masking, you can kind of keep that height down. Uh, that enables managers or other coworkers to be able to see across the space much better. Uh, so people don't fall asleep behind their six foot cubicle uh, if the boss can't see them. So that's just another benefit to the, the business and the company uh, that a sound masking system can offer. Okay, what can it not do? It cannot cancel existing noise. The cone of silence does not exist. It does not block existing noise. It's not gonna make anything quiet. Okay, it's going to get louder. Uh, it doesn't make, even, you know, eavesdropping does not make it easier. People are not gonna get sick or deaf from listening to it. Uh, and it will not reduce noise in a space that's already too loud. It's very important.
it's really easy for me to hear what he's saying outside because now he's screaming at somebody in order to sound natural. It's at work. The air conditioner turned on. Um, so uh, it always goes at the listener because you don't want the talker to have to talk louder to talk over the sound masking. You want them to be able to talk at the normal level they would. You just want to make it harder for it to be intelligible to the listener. You know, the listener may still be able to hear that they're talking. Okay, this is another one of those owner needs to understand. Sound masking does not cancel the noise, it just makes it unintelligible. Okay, so the noise, if I'm in an office talking to someone and you guys were outside with sound masking, you're probably still gonna know that I'm talking. Because you'll hear me sort of like the, you know, the peanuts teacher, wah, 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 wah. It's gonna be like that. You're not gonna understand the words. You may, be, you may hear that I'm having a conversation, but you're not gonna be able to understand what's being said, okay? Well, so that's say that you're in an accounting department, are you like accounts receivable? Like are you, are you, you're making calls? You're making calls, but you're dealing with numbers, but you're, you don't want to be distracted yep. by so it. Yeah, so probably everyone's in a cubicle. That's a perfect kind of place. That's a perfect kind of application for it. You know, say that you've got uh, an office where there's offices around cubicles, right? And maybe some of these offices are, you know, closed door conversations, conference rooms, boss's office, whatever putting the speakers in that center section would enable those offices to get more speech privacy uh, so that the people in the bullpen wouldn't hear. Um, you know, there's gonna be some instances where everyone needs speech privacy and you're gonna have to use a combination of sound and material, but it, it just kind of depends on, on the, the job in the building. Um, more often than not, sound masking can cover most of it, but depending on the level of privacy that's required, you know, going up another foot or two with a cubicle will make also a difference. Uh, for the person in the cubicle. Okay, so this is, we talked about this also already. Rule number two, it's gotta be invisible. People do not want to know where the sound masking speaker is. They don't wanna be able to pinpoint it. They don't wanna be able to see and say that speaker is making this noise. Um, hardware is always out of sight. You know, it's locked in a cabinet somewhere, just like everything we try and do, put it in a rack with a locked door and take the key so the customer can't mess with it. Uh, don't turn it off when people are there. You know, you can turn it off at night when no one's gonna be in the building, it's not a big deal. Um, but it, you'll notice a big difference. Like, we can all hear the air conditioner right now, right? When the air conditioner turns off again, you're gonna be like, oh, it's much louder in here now. And that's the same kind of thing that a sound masking system would do. You know, there's been days when someone turns the one off that's in our office uh, on accident and it's sort of, you know, I've looked up and been like, what just happened? Like, it's way different in here now. So turning it off midday when, some, when people are already in there is gonna be a distraction to them. Um, so like there are systems that will enable you to turn it on early and then the volume will ramp up as the day goes on and then ramp down as the day continues. So it's more continuous as people are there. Just depends on what kind of a, an office it is and what the situation is. And then uh, this, the level of the speakers needs to be spatially uniform. So, you know, you don't want Speakers tapped at four watts on this side of the room and one watt on this side of the room because it's just going to sound louder over there and people are going to be like, why is it louder over there? Something weird is happening. Okay, so what are the best places to put sound masking speakers? Under the floor if you can. It's not really practical in a lot of places, um, but under the floor is the best place to do it because no one is ever going to see the speaker. No one's ever gonna know that they're there and the noise is just going to come up from the floor closer to the listener, right? So if I'm sitting in my chair, that sound has to come up, you know, three or four feet for me to notice it uh, in order for it to make an impact as opposed to, you know, if I have a 10 foot drop tile ceiling with a 14 foot deck above that, that a speaker is now say hanging, you know, 10 or 12 feet above me and now that sound is trying to come down, putting it on the floor is much easier. If you can't put it under the floor, putting it above the drop tile ceiling um, is the next best place to put it. Uh, you will notice uh, on one of these upcoming slides the sound masking speakers that are above the ceiling hang and they fire up. They don't fire down. Okay, they fire up so all that sound kind of goes up, mixes together and then comes down like a beautiful waterfall of noise, right? It all just comes down together. You can't pinpoint where that one speaker is because it's super loud right here, not loud right here because all that sound is coming down together. So we talked about this, the down-firing speakers. 
it exists in the world. Someone might tell you, hey, I saw this thing from this company. And if you gave them that example of walking through and hearing it as you go from one speaker to the next, depending on how far apart they are, I think they would all agree that that's going to drive people insane. And if they say, well, I just put more together, you can say, yeah, you can do that. And you're going to triple your budget for speakers because you're going to need so many speakers in order to uh, make it be like that, uh, that it would be uncost effective to do it and it would be a waste of time. All right, so this is my sound masking speaker. This is the M1000, uh, and it's firing up uh, in this drop-down ceiling. Uh, so there, uh, you know, the sound is going to come out of this and sort of flow over with its neighbor, and the sound's all just going to come through the, the drop tile. So you put them six inches above the ceiling tile. So if you've got, uh, you know, if you've got the 10-foot drop tile ceiling, and then there's another 10 feet above that going to the deck, you've got to get some long chain. Right, because you don't want to put it all the way, hang it all the way up by the ceiling, because then all that sound's got to come way down, and you're going to have to really tap that speaker in order to make it loud enough to be heard by the time it gets down to the listener. So you put it about six feet above the ceiling tile. Did you notice how it went off and now it's louder? It's weird, right? Someone just turned off the sound masking system? Freaks me out when that happens. Um, so the smooth, diffuse sound is the point. You don't want people to be able to pinpoint where that sound is coming from. You want them to be able to hear it, understand it's there, but have it not bother them. Uh, so it can't be too loud. It's really background, background. You know, the average ceiling, the average sound masking speaker is tapped at, at a half a watt or one watt. That's how little power goes into them uh, in order to make them work. Uh, white noise or pink noise, we talked about this. Pink noise is generally used in a drop tile uh, application. If you're going to put it under something or, or above something that's thicker, more dense, uh, then you're going to use white noise. Uh, and that's just going to be dependent on uh, when you get on job site what you're dealing with. Does everybody in here own an RTA? No? If you're going to do sound masking, invest in a good RTA. And don't download an app with your phone. Don't download an app with your phone. Buy an RTA. So the RTA is important because you're going to have to walk the entire space with that RTA and you're going to look at a bunch of different frequencies to see what the volume is um, because that is going to be the uh, setting and adjusting the uh, amplifier and the generator to get the sound that you need in order to cover that space. So if you just have a dB meter and it registers you know, all volume, uh, there may be too much high in that or too, maybe too much low. So when you're doing a sound masking system, if possible, using uh, uh, an equalizer uh, that you can adjust uh, frequencies with is going to be able to get you to the point of adjusting it uh, where it needs to be in order for people to be able to uh, use it most effectively. So an RTA uh, and an equalizer are going to be uh, your two best friends. Um, you could also um, do this digitally through DSP or something like that, depending on the system uh, and, and what you're using. Also capable. So this gives us a, an idea of what I'm talking about when I say the importance of that RTA and the equalizer. Okay, so this is uh, an open office masking curve. So I've got frequency and dB. So you can see that at 160 hertz, I want the level to be 46 dB, but at 3.15 kilohertz, I want it to be 28. Okay, so for me to be using uh, just a, an SPL meter walking around and I get to 46 and I say, oh great, I'm done. Well, I'm now I'm 46 at 3.15, that's going to be too loud, right? It's not going to do its job properly. So being able to walk around and measure each of these frequency levels with that RTA uh, is really going to be important to make sure that it's set up properly. Uh, as part of our sound masking uh, design help, we will also give you this information so that way you can go out there and, uh, and set it where it needs to be set at in order to make it work. Uh, this is a closed office. Notice that we're 5 dB less at the 160 hertz range uh, and we're 8 dB less at that 3.15. So in a closed office versus an open office application, your volumes and levels are going to be different by frequency. That's why if you're going to get into sound masking as a regular thing, having the right equipment is going to be super important and making sure that you're selling the customer the right stuff is going to be very important. So Atlas IED has been doing this for 35 years. Guy works for us up in New Hampshire, his name's Steve Brooks. And he's sort of like the, 
I don't know, bless you, probably the third smartest sound masky guy in the world. Uh, there's a guy named Dr. Robert Cheneau. Uh He's probably the smartest sound masking guy in the world. He helped us write a book a couple years ago about sound masking. Uh, so he works with Steve a lot. They're pretty good friends. Uh, there's no sound masking job that I've ever seen that Steve couldn't work with or make better. So um, he's usually the guy that gets those sound masking design requests first. And then he's got a call him a disciple that lives up in at our Wisconsin facility and uh, and he helps him do some of those sound masking jobs so um, if you need help with sound masking we're available for that right any questions about sound masking okay so what I've got over here is a what we call the AM 1200 don't mind my rat's nest the AM 1200 is this little box right here and so this is an all-in-one sound masking system. So we talked about a business that has a you know, manager's office or something. You know, they may not need uh, the third band equalizer. They may not need a giant amp. They may not need, uh, you know, they don't want to spend the money for all of that because just, they just need one speaker, right? So this has everything in, inside of it. This has an amp, uh, the sound masking generator, and two speakers. 